If you had the opportunity to eliminate a cancer, why wouldn't you take that opportunity? Especially with a cancer that is responsible for so much death, disease and suffering worldwide. In Victoria, we've been active participants in screening programs to ensure that cancers are detected earlier in take-up of vaccination programs as well. And so we've seen as a result of that, Victoria achieve the lowest levels of cervical cancer in Australia. Australia now has a very low incidence of mortality, but Victoria is approaching what will be possibly elimination targets with a mortality of about one per 100,000, which is absolutely world leading. And what that tells you is that with the right um, systems and processes, you can achieve very good control of cervical cancer. It puts within our grasp the possibility of eliminating cervical cancer as a public health issue. So that was really exciting for us as an organisation to, to stand behind that target. We will entrench it in our new strategic plan and we will commit funds to achieving that target. And we will also seek to partner with other organisations who share that aspiration. Australia has led the way in cervical cancer prevention. The impact of this globally is that we can now demonstrate to the world at large how effective the vaccines actually are because the burden of disease caused by these papillomaviruses in Australia has just disappeared over the course of the last 10 years. And we are now seriously thinking that cervical cancer will simply be gone from Australia by 2028. That becomes really exciting to think that we can be able to achieve that target and then have a small role to play in sharing that knowledge with the global community, recognising how much enormous damage is done by um, cervical cancer worldwide. The identification of the vaccine in Australia meant that we were at the forefront of being able to lobby government to get girls vaccinated. Through vaccination we would really reduce the number of women who got HPV infection to begin with and also therefore the number that would go on to cervical cancer. And the steps that have been taken are implementing the vaccine, but importantly, changing our cervical screening program. And what that does is helps us to identify those girls and women who haven't cleared the virus from their cervix and are at higher risk of getting cervical cancer. So those things combined really make a comprehensive program in Australia. And so within the space of five months, I've gone from a diagnosis of a pretty terrible form of cancer to now being cured, which is quite remarkable and surreal. Well, I think I've been um, very fortunate that I have access to excellent preventative health care. Really, if it wasn't for this screening, I would be in a very different situation. It is such a wonderful thing to see in Australia, leaders in research are being so generous with the way that knowledge is being shared globally. We want to be able to use the knowledge that is generated in other countries and apply it locally. We also want to make sure that knowledge that we generate is being shared, particularly in low and middle income countries where the challenges with cervical cancer are greatest. Vaccination has been a key component of the program here in Australia. And yet despite that success, we still have about one in five younger women are not vaccinated. So I think we still have some work to do. What I would say to parents and anyone who is undecided is to look at the evidence and look at those trusted institutions that we have in our communities that promote vaccination. I think it's very easy to be seduced by snippets that we might see in social media that really have no basis in scientific evidence. So while Australia is on this pathway to being the first country in the world to eliminate cervical cancer, we need to recognise that we have huge inequalities here as well. Indigenous women are more than twice as likely to get cervical cancer and almost four times as likely to die from it. That means that we have to do more to make sure that Indigenous girls and boys are getting access to the vaccine in the same rates that Australian non-Indigenous children are getting the vaccine. But also we need to do much more to increase participation in cervical screening by Indigenous women. Also um, those who face socioeconomic um, disadvantage and those from a gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender background. So those are going to be the populations that we want to partner with to lend our expertise to work in partnership with those communities to help us achieve these uh, targets. Certainly cervical cancer elimination is our target, but equity is our goal here. 
We know that cervical cancer is more prevalent in disadvantaged populations and that is going to be the focus of our work. And I think in this environment, what better way could there be to be promoting the health of populations than addressing what is entirely preventable? A disease that causes so much harm and yet we have the opportunity with very cost-effective strategies to change that outcome. If we can achieve successful scale-up of HPV and cervical screening and vaccination, the estimates suggest that we could prevent up to 13 million cervical cancer cases in the next 50 years. Countries like Australia are really looking imminently now at the potential for elimination of cervical cancer. Getting to the end game for cervical cancer is a matter of political will. We have the tools but we call on governments of all persuasions to take those tools and implement them with full commitment. It's imperative that young people are encouraged to have that vaccination. It's one small jab that can save many, many lives and we have it at our fingertips. I'm very lucky that I get to see my children grow up.